Since 1994, say fast and more, our reliable name, MixCat.com. Keep with MixCat. Uh, today we're doing another power saving project. I picked up a, a timer from Home Depot. They're pretty cheap too, about uh, $40, $50 for the, the timer in a box. And what you essentially do with this is you set the timer for the times that you're not going to be using the hot water. Uh, my hot water heater is pretty quick and usually will make plenty of hot water in about a half hour. It's a full size unit for the house. So uh, what the plan is, during the evenings I'm actually going to have the hot water heater go off and also during the day when I'm at work. Uh, that way we're saving some power when we actually don't need that hot water. Just think about it, 24-7 this uh, big guy is running and uh, chewing up electricity. So when it's not necessary, it definitely would be a great way to save some cash is actually running off a timer. So I got a lot of great suggestions from you guys. I really do appreciate it. So this is the next of the power saving series, I'm trying to slash my $400 a month electric bill down to hopefully 100 If not, maybe they owe me 100 That would be great. All right, stay tuned, guys. There's a shot of my uh, hot water heater. It does run at 220. Um, what's neat about this power box is it's adjustable from 110 to 220. So uh, a lot of different options with that. So if you wanted to time something else in the house, it would uh, definitely fit the bill. The box that this one came with is only good for inside. So if you got a, a unit that is outside or you're looking to time something that's outside, you'd have to get something a little bit more durable with seals on it. But this will make a, a great timer, being it's inside my garage and I'll show you guys how that hooks up. Another neat thing about this box is you can actually go from the bottom mount um, or a side. So you can punch out the different um, holes that you need to get into it. And all the receptacles are on the bottom here. Um, this is where the electric's going to feed to and the timer to set. Um, if you need it to override it, it's got a switch where you can run it without the timer. Just in case, like on the weekends when we're actually home and we want to have hot water heater pretty much all the uh, hot water all the time, you can turn that on. But when it's not needed, of course, we'll run it off the timer and I'll set that to times that make sense for us. Okay, I'm thinking probably the best spot for this timer is going to be right here. This is actually the um, lead that goes into the fuse panel over here, the breaker box. So I'm going to put it right here, that way we can have the line go in and come out right about there. And it's above the water line, so if I ever had a problem I wouldn't have to worry about water getting into the, uh, the box. Right. Zip these guys out. is the actual bottom of the, the water heater here and I'm standing in front of the light let me move this here at the very bottom you'll notice that you have a little spigot um, every couple months what you're going to want to do is actually just bleed a little bit of the water out of the bottom into a bucket and that will get the sediment out of the bottom of the, um, the hot water heater keep it running good and just uh, make sure all the, the crap is out of there and nothing collects on the elements this particular unit actually, and this is electric, um, it wouldn't make much sense if it was gas if, because of the pilot light and what have you, but this actually has an element in the top and bottom, so I have two controls, uh, two little inspection panels just like that, that actually control the temperature, top and bottom. What you're going to want to do is make sure um, you get yourself maybe like a, uh, a turkey thermometer or a poultry thermometer, meat thermometer, whatever you have in the house. Um, make sure your hot water after running it for a couple minutes is about 120 degrees. If it's any more than that, it's really overkill and you're just eating up a lot of electric. But you can adjust the um, temperature by going to both of these uh, little thermostats. And again, you just kind of adjust till you see 120 out of your, your hot water and that, that'll be perfect. Here's the top control that I was telling you guys about. Um, it's got a little uh, thermostat and it goes from on this one a, B, and C, and it says very hot. So you got hot to very hot. 
Um, and right now this is a, a little bit more than in the middle. For us it's 120 degrees. Um, this was original with the house, so this is going on about eight years old. Um, what I'm actually pulling this off for is the electric feeds down into here, and I want to make sure that me shutting that breaker off, that the electric is actually off and they didn't miss um, label one of the breakers, because that could be pretty messy. So I'm going to get a voltmeter and touch it to that and make sure we don't have any current. All right, forgive the camera angle here, I'm a one-man operation. <laughs> I got the meter on the top here. I'm going to go across the two poles here and I should see zero. There's my hot and and it's showing point um, let's see. Not even a volt. What I'm going to do is actually plug it in and show you guys if it had been on what it'll look like. Should be about 220 to 240. There we are, 232.7. That's a lot of current. You don't want to be hit with that. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. And it's going to be right under a volt. All right. So we're 0 0.290. So we still have a little something, and that's probably just coming off the ground. And move this to the nothing there. Not even a bolt, so that's that's safe to touch. 200 would light you up pretty quick. So now I know it's safe for me to go ahead and cut the line here. And that's what we're going to do. Another quick note: uh, you can tell it's Fifth of July. People still blowing off the fireworks. Protect your hands. This is not just a fashion statement. If you like to keep your your fingers, protect them. You should never know. Especially with this stuff, it can be pretty razor, razor sharp. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of unwinding this. I don't have any fancy equipment or anything like that. I'm just going to kind of unwind this, cut it, and feed my box with this cable. Right. Just going to do about, I'd say, most of the foot, just shy of foot. Again, this stuff could be pretty sharp. That's why I'm saying use the uh, use the gloves. And if you're not comfortable doing this stuff, call a electrician. I'm sure he's not going to charge much. Put in a timer if this isn't your cup of tea. As you can see, I'm not an electrician, but. get this all figured out. There's only really three lines, and one of them's a ground, so not too complicated. You fix laptops all day long, there's a lot more little things in there. And with a laptop, you're not working with 220, but it can really bite you. Go ahead and cut that line and get to work in here. That would have been pretty bad if the uh, electric wasn't shut off. <laughs> All right, let's him first. There we are. Some pretty thick line on here. Some high current. And again, forgive the the camera work here. I'm very limited in the garage. do is just cut this the line just to get at it that way I can strip it and pull it through the box again it's only three three lines in here and one of these is the ground so of course the ground is the one that's really not shielded too well it's got paper on that All right. that's it and this is going to be pulled through the box and hooked up accordingly all right, we're just going to knock out the side here. That's pretty easy. Let me 
the other side. It's tougher than usual. Looking good. Alright, that's going to go through this side. And the other goes through that side. Beautiful. Alright, now to mount it on the wall. Hopefully I don't block your view too much here. Alright. This is going to go through here and bolt up on top. Alright. That's probably a little smarter way to do it. Beautiful. Alright. Better and it's got some retaining screws for the bottom. Hold it just right. It's starting to look like something. Alright. Take the jacket off of this guy and expose the ground too so I can put our grounds together. It's amazing how long the uh, hot water heater actually uh, holds hot water in the tank. Being it's insulated, you really do get a couple hours before it starts to cool off. So I'm guessing probably a lot of saved electric on this uh, project. Okay, um, and this is where the directions come in nice and handy. Um, and of course, yours might not be exactly the same as mine, but it does have some nice color graphics on how to set this up. Um, this some dip switches that actually have to be turned for 220. This one actually will work on 110 as well, so it's got a couple different settings. Um, dip switch number two needs to be turned on and the rest stay off. Okay, so we did that. And the first two here are for the timer. So it needs the hot to one and two, and that's going to turn on the timer. Then there's some jumpers that go across to your common and your north. Um, essentially all I did so far is hook up the uh, power from the breaker into the, the line in here and that's on the left hand side. Um, I flipped the dip switches which uh, show on the panel here so it's for uh, 220 to 240. I'm going to turn on the breaker and again the uh, actual hot water heater the lines pulled through but it's not hooked up as you can see. Good. Okay, I flip on the switch and you can see I get a light. So we know at least that's working. I should be able to flip this and see the timer come on. There it is. And I heard the relays kick on. So, so far so good. I'm going to go ahead and shut the breaker off. And now we're going to figure out the pinout for the actual hot water heater hookup. I am so not an electrician. <laughs> Please don't send me comments or emails on what wire goes where on your particular box, definitely refer to the manual that you get with your box. I can't say that enough. Luckily, this particular unit, again, has pictures. So you really can't lose with uh, pictures and uh, tells you exactly how to do it. And if all fails, actually has an 800 number on um, support. OK, so I got everything all wired up. Uh, looking at my ground now. 
Okay. Everything's torqued down nice and tight. As you can see, all clean connections in there. I'm going to go ahead and turn the breaker on. We got a light and turn this on. Okay, I heard it actually turn on. Let me zoom out and see if we get voltage Ooh, at the bottom. Excuse me. Right. Let's see here. I heard something click down there. It sounded like a relay. Aha! 226.5. So we got current back on this unit. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and button everything up and figure out how to set the timer. Okay. Woohoo! It looks pretty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let me button it up here. All right, on this particular one, to turn the timer on, it goes all the way to the top. Give it power. All right, it says power. Uh, time now is pointing to 11. There we go. And I'm going to turn it, and it should turn on that relay. We should hear a click. There it went. Status is on. All right, so it looks like we got this jammer working. See the voltage down here. I see 226. Turn them. All right, it's off and it should go off. I see nothing. Yay! All right, the timer works. All right, I was just informed it's 10 o'clock. So I am going to set this jammer to 10 o'clock. To 8 o'clock to 11. And at night, when we come home, typically, let's see, like 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock to 11. Not bad. This, is li this literally should cut my water heating bill more than in half at these temperatures. And these are really the only times I need it. And what's really nice about the timer is I can actually override it and just turn it on if I if I actually need the hot water. But that's that's pretty much it. I'm going to fill this with a little bit of uh, silicone. Actually, I have, a, I have expanding um, insulation I'll put in there. But nice and clean. It goes right into this uh, hot water heater. And excited to see what the savings is going to be. I'm sure I'm going to get questions about this unit here. What is this? It's a whole water house filter. This is just to get the basic sediment and some of the nasties out of the water before it goes into the house. On my shower, I also have a filter. Um, under my sink, I have reverse osmosis, and I showed you guys that in another uh, video. This just makes sure you get the basic garbage out of the water before it enters in the house. Um, great to have that before the hot water heater, just to make sure you get calcium out of the, uh, the lines. That way you don't have calcium deposits inside your hot water heater. And that um, leads to longer life of all your pipes and appliances. Since 1994, save fast and more. Our reliable name, MixCat.com.